the one but the one argument that I hear right or like tossed out and I'm, I'm not like particularly fond of this argument but I see it get tossed around in in any of these spaces where there's there's like a conflict at the minute between like government oversight and regulation and privacy like there's it's it's the same argument that get you got used about about cryptocurrency for example to begin with especially bitcoin it's like aren't you helping criminals like you know aren't you just providing a way for you know money launderers and you know human traffickers to communicate anonymously like why should you know should we really have that ability to communicate privately i think like when you look at who who is actually using the messaging app like session like i i mean we can't say exactly because we don't really know um but we do interact with session users every day like people will come to us um, through session and tell us their story and um stuff like that and from what i've heard the majority of users are just normal people um in normal countries just trying to get back some of their privacy after hearing about stuff like the nsa like prism where they were collecting data on mass like they are like they're not like you know dark cd criminals trying to do um you know drug deals online or whatever like I, you know I, from what i've seen it's mainly just normal people so i think like you know this argument doesn't even really hold up on the basis of itself like if you were to look at like other an anonymity providing technologies like Tor as well, like yes, there is um, a portion of Tor that is used to sell drugs online, but if you look at the traffic, um, you know, by what is routed on Tor, it's like ninety nine percent of it is exiting into the normal internet, and like one percent of it is exiting into the internal like Onion addresses, and then you would say maybe like ten percent of that traffic is actually illegal traffic. So you're like they're trying to kind of demonize the 99 percent of legitimate users by taking the probably one percent or the 0.1 percent of users who misuse the anonymity that they've been given um and say that that's oh it's all all the 99 percent are are, the, are this like sub one percent i mean it's just not a very good argument when you look at the technical um aspect of it from what i can see at least no i mean I, I'm not here to say that I, I buy the argument. I mean, it's like, no, no, it's like, what do you use? You cash? Know, that <gasps> That's what drug dealers use. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, it's like, it's like, did you know that, uh, yeah, criminals used to use phone lines as well? It's like, how, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, and criminals use US dollars as well. You know, we haven't stopped, you know, sending those around the world. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's no way to talk about Congress. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Let's go back a little bit to to Signal and and the fork um, from Signal. So, when like when did like Signal be sort of start up and become possible um, as a company and as a as a like as a piece of technology? I know maybe maybe you weren't around back then, but I'm hoping you can at least give me some idea. And then like why did Session fork from um, from Signal? Like what was the you know what was the beef about? It? <laughs> So uh, Signal started as Text Secure, and that was the original app name. Um, and I believe it was an Android only thing for quite a while. Um, they've developed their software. I think they're probably about nine, nine or 10 years old now. They're, they're, they've been around for a while and they've developed um, a lot over that period of time. Um, and kind of originally all kind of based around this idea of like, OTR, which is like off the record messaging, um, which provides like certain properties to um, the messaging protocol. Um, I mean, we have come in like um, session or uh, like session or originally it was called Loki Messenger has come in much earlier than that. I think we're getting to be maybe two and a half years old now or three years old. Um, it's not really that we had any beef um, with the signal guys. Um, we hadn't really worked actively with them on their code base or anything like that. We just saw that they had really good technology and we knew that they weren't going to, uh, you know, decentralize their entire network and add in onion routing. I don't think because it didn't see, it didn't seem to me like there was any appetite for that on the signal side of things. I mean, they were still trying to work through like 
you know, getting st stopping the use of phone numbers, like, and they still haven't done that. So, I think they're pretty, they're pretty big. Like, they're pretty, they're much bigger than us. Um, they're, but that means that I think they're a little bit more slow moving than us, um, and they're trying to cater to I think a little bit of a larger user base than we are as well. Not to say that um, like Session doesn't have wide application as well. I think it does. Um, but I think they're trying to get people to switch from WhatsApp uh, to Signal. Uh, and that experience of like, okay, you have a phone number in one and you have a phone number in the other, it's like a much easier to understand rather than, you know, kind of generating a long, a long key um, and, and migrating that way um, and not having any of your existing contacts in there as well. So, I mean, it wasn't so much that we had a beef with them. It was that we wanted to build a technology that leveraged some of their encryption protocols. Um, and we didn't think that they were going to be particularly happy to like merge a massive like you know change back into their um, source code thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video don't forget to like share subscribe and leave a comment for us in the comments below let me know what you thought and if you'd like to see more of this from the show thank you and we'll see you again next time